Hi Jokers, thanks for watching this episode of Jokers Physiotherapy. Today, I wanted to uh, answer some of the questions that I've received. Thank you for your questions. Uh, this one came in about three days ago from Anita Dongre B, uh, B3R. Uh, she said, she, I assume, says, um, I get a sudden jaw lock whenever uh, I take a yawn and then when I, when jaw gets locked, uh, I am unable to close my mouth again. What should I do? Okay, so uh, that's the message or the inquiry that I've received. Look, this is a, a general education and uh, you know general information. It's for a general education purpose, but it, it really again I'm sorry to say, but it is it depends. Now there are a number of things I could think about. Now with a yawn. Um, let's say there are three things that can potentially be. One, the disc inside your jaw joint as you yawn, uh, or it, it may always be the disc is staying uh, forward. It's called the anterior disc dislocation without reduction. So redu without reduction means the disc has permanently moved out. The reason are numerous, but common ones are the clenching episodes that goes on through the night or during the day or grinding and just pushes the disc forward and permanently staying forward. So as you open wide, uh, I've got this uh, little jaw man or jaw person, jaw woman, uh, and he has a representation of normal jaw right here with the blue thing being the disc and blue thing, this is the disc that's anteriorly displaced without reduction. So it's staying forward and there's nothing to separate between the bottom jaw and the top jaw. So that's staying forward. Now, if you open wide, you can imagine it spins like this. The jaw joint spins like this. And as you yawn, it's going wider, right? So, so this thing here called the condyle, that's, that's where the disc usually sits on top of the condyle. Condyle could go underneath the disc. So for example, if I use my hand, uh, it's normally like this and as you open, it's still staying on top of the condyle as it spins for the first 70% of the open. But with a yawning, typically it probably will go beyond the 70% of opening, you know? So when that happens, uh, for example, this condyle could go underneath this disc. So it goes underneath, for example, my hand is a disc, it's usually sitting forward. Uh, that's the condyle, disc is sitting here where it should be sitting on top, but it's permanently sitting ahead. As you yawn, it gets underneath it. And as you close suddenly, quickly, it's not able to come back in or come back in or behind to close. So as you open, it rise underneath and over, and as you close, it gets stuck. So you can't close. That's what we call the open lock. That's a potential uh, mechanism. And if this is the case, there are two things that can be contributing to that. One, the side that the disc is forward, yeah. It could both either be one side or both sides, but typically one side. Uh, let's say left side. So left side has stiffness that's pushed the disc forward in the first place, or the clenching. So unless you remove the clenching or grinding pattern, uh, it's very hard to remove this particular anatomical structure or issues with the structure where the disc staying forward, discs, disc stays forward. Or the other side that is the stiff side and it's literally just trying to yank this side. For example, if the problems, this is the, the side that you have trouble closing, it could be because this one is so stiff and it sort of pushes this one over because the, the right side, as in the good side, is unable to 
move as smooth as this side so it just eventually affects the side that you're experiencing problem so unless you really have a specific assessment by a professional who has special interest in jaw problem these are very difficult to uh, pick so at the end of the day you really need to seek help from a a uh, professional or a musculoskeletal professional such as physical therapist or physiotherapist, uh, other professionals that deal with muscles and joints and uh, movements, especially physical therapists, deal with all of them, uh, but chiropractors, osteopath, 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 again, every country has different qualification levels, so it's hard to say, but in general, they are the people who and have special interest in treating jaw problem, are the people to have assess assessment from and then get the appropriate treatments. Okay, third one. So those two, one side that's the problem and that's stiff and it's pushing the disc out. Or the other side is a problem and it's just yanking the good side, which is the symptomatic side, and out. And it's hard to bring him back. Either way, the disc may be forward and it's it's, it's coming back that just ob obstructs the way back. Or the disc, it's rare and it's very rare and I probably have seen handful only, uh, but it is the disc moves instead of forward, it goes behind and it sits in the pocket in the area called the uh, articular eminence or the back, back part of the articular eminence. Uh, can you see here? It's, there's hardly any space here. But if the, you can imagine this blue thing goes back into this area, then the bone, as in condyle, has trouble going back into the right place. For example, if I simulate my finger being my finger being the disc, you can see you can see the disc, as in as in the condyle, has trouble going back properly because I'm pushing disc forward and so you, therefore it's hard to close your mouth it stays open all right so with this one it's it's again i don't have a a an excellent solution we just got to do anything like for example i have other, other video called around the world where you can move in three different directions of uh, that the jaw has three different combinations whether it's the forward sideways and then open or sideways forward open with any whichever way possible to try and get the disc to come forward so that it can sit on top of the condyle which is a normal joint kinematics or this uh, uh, architecture or the anatomy so um but yes uh, there's no one solution with that one but either way it is very tricky to diagnose whether it is those top two problems or the third one which is a rare one but nonetheless in theory it can happen or you've had in the in the past some sort of trauma to the jaw joint where the disc may be split split so parts of it can be sitting on top of the condyle as in normal and parts of it may be sitting behind, as in behind, if you look at it from the side. So that, that could happen, uh, or parts of it could be split, and one's on top, uh, the other portion could be forward. Uh, if that's, especially the person who's had the trauma to, your, to the face or the jaw in the past, however long that may have been. Um, but yes, these are, I, hope, I hope these are helpful to understand that it can be worthwhile paying a visit to someone who knows about the jaw, jaw joint anatomy, normal joint, and what is not normal and what could be the possibility of the issue for a particular person with a particular condition. Um, especially with a jaw lock, if you find the right way to do it, it is easy to solve and it can be a long lasting solution that uh, we can provide uh, you know uh, instead of being scared of opening mouth wide for yawning yeah we all want to enjoy a full yawn when we want to yawn right 
Uh, we don't want to conserve by having mouth uh, conservatively open to try and yawn. It's tricky. Um, so yeah, I hope this is helpful. Please let us know what you think. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up or please subscribe for future videos. Or if you could go to our ch my channel, uh, I have about 120 odd episodes all about the jaw or anything related to the jaw joints or the uh, uh, parts of migraine that could be related to your jaw, issues, posture, you name it. So thank you for watching this episode of Joker's Physiotherapy and happy rehab. Cheers.